The anime starts with Keizaki Arata, an unemployed 27-year-old man who is called by his friends to have a night out drinking. He puts on a show for them, he really is struggling with money, even quitting his previous job after only three months because he didn't find it fitting. To make things worse, his mother calls to ask about his new job interview, which didn't go well, and tells him that they won't be supporting him anymore, cutting all monetary support. As he goes back home wasted, he comes across a man who seems to know everything about him. The man introduces himself as Yoke Ryo, a worker at Real IFA Laboratories, and explains to him that he's been selected as a subject for a new experiment. The man shows him a little pill in a box, asking if he's got his attention now, to then explains that all of his expenses would be covered for the year that the experiment lasts. The next day, the proto wakes up normally, but when he sees himself in the mirror, he realizes that he looks like a 17-year-old. He then remembers the pill and everything that happened, so he rushes to the table to realize that he did take him. Someone knocks on the door and his phone is buzzing. To his surprise, it's just Ryo, who came to bring all his high school stuff. The proto is having doubts about joining that weird experiment, which makes the other man upset, as he's basically been given the chance to change his life. Realizing this, he finally accepts and signs the contract, so beginning that spring, he'll be a high schooler. The first day of classes arrives, and although he feels like a misfit, he tries to have a low profile and sit on the back. But to his bad luck, a girl explains that he's sitting on her desk as everyone has assigned seats. He moves seats and is already sulking for making a fool of himself. He then notices Ryo sitting some rows away from him who smiles at him kindly. Although the wants to say something, the homeroom teacher arrives and he has to sit. After introducing herself, she makes them all introduce. But when it gets to the blondish boy, he mentions that he was at the school the year before, making Arata wonder if he was really just a kid or an adult. The kids start introducing themselves, and he of course blasts as being nervous, but not everything seems to be bad, as a sweet girl named Onoya, and also introduces herself as a transferred student, eating him. After all introductions are made, the teacher asks them to put everything aside so they can have their tests, which surprises the proto. However, he had grade school, so he's confident. But when he goes to grab a pencil, he realizes that he didn't bring any, so he complains to his backpack. Feeling like he's acting suspicious, the teacher asks to see his back, finding a pack of cigars. Everyone is shocked, but he doesn't see what is wrong with it, until he realizes that a teenage boy shouldn't bring a pack of cigars out of habit, as he says to the teacher. She asks him to meet her after classes and sends him to do the test. Yet the problem of the pencil remains, so a girl with a cold name Carrie Arena simply passes him one, which he takes. The test time is finally over and he thanks the girl, although he points out that she should have stayed at home. So a boy named Oda Kazuomi tells him that the tests are to dizzing the class representative, so she wouldn't miss them, as she took that place on previous years. However, she might have troubles now seeing that Ishiro Chizuru, top class student and the girl Arara changes seats with, is in her class. When classes are done, he tries to go back home, but the teacher pulls him aside to lecture him about the dangers of smoking. Seeing that she's a very young girl, but very passionate about her job, the boy tells her that he admires her for putting her life together. She thanks him, as she's always overlooked for being young, but still makes him write an apology letter as punishment. Once he's finally able to get out, he comes across Ryo, who explains to him that he's on his class to supervise him and make reports on his development, also explaining that he was at the school the year before for training. As they walk together, the proto complains about being in third year, as it's the hardest year, which bugs the other one, as this program is to rehabilitate any ETs. It shouldn't be easy. He encourages to make friends and not to rely on another adult like him, willing to let him have his experience the way he decides. Episode 2 The results of the test come back the next day and Kazuomi and Chizuru are selected as the class representatives, which definitely upsets Rina. However, our protagonist faces another type of problem as he failed all of his tests, so the blonde boy offers to help him for his make-ups tests, and joins them as well as she also failed. During break, they sit together to have lunch, but Keru doesn't join them. At the cafeteria, the girl with the braids directly asks if Kazu and Rina are dating, but the boy seems oblivious about it, which upsets the other two, as it's very obvious to them. The girl notices that him and the redhead have matching piercings, so he explains that during first year he allowed his brother to do it to him, but it was so painful that he chose to give the other setting to the girl, who came to class the next day with her ear pierced, even though she refused at first. This makes the pair feel sorry for the girl, as even if the boy is smart, he's very oblivious when it comes to feelings. The Arata notices the other class rep arguing with the kitchen staff, so he goes up to her to see what's wrong. She quickly recognizes him as the boy who got a four or the boy of the cigars, not really quoting his name, which upsets the proto. However, she explains that she didn't bring any money out of habit, but she didn't pick her silver pin either, so she can't have any food. Although he doesn't really understand, he simply hands her a 1,000 yen bill as a loan, but she doesn't take it. She explains that for him to give such a large amount in such a nonchalant manner is almost like he was an adult. This gets the pro to nervous, who just gives her the money, making some silly excuse about an allowance so she doesn't have a choice but to accept it and promise to repay it the next day. The proto blushes and gets nervous about it but feels like it wrong, because he's really an adult. 
When he's back to the table, the other two praise his smooth moves and the blonde boy explains that she just forgot her pin, explaining to him that the silver pin allows the reps to eat at the cafeteria for free along many other perks. The two kids start to exchange info, taking their phones out, which warns the prota, as in his high school times, phones were banned. So she explains that the school rules allow them as long as it's not during class, asking also for his contact info. The girl tells them both to just call her Anne, and the proto complies, surprising his new friend for dropping the honorifics so easily. In the distance, Rio looks at them disapproving. After classes, Arata goes to drop his apology letter to the staff room, where he comes across Chizuru. She once again calls him by nicknames, as she really didn't get his name, so he introduces himself again. She then notices that he already knew his name, impressed by him just remembering it. They both apologize for it, and he asks her why does she talk so formally, to which she explains that she talks like that to everyone, and it isn't personal. Suddenly, the girl asks if that makes her look unapproachable, as she's been told before, but the boy is able to ease her, telling her that it makes her a person worthy to get to know. She then opens up and explains that it has always been hard for her to make friends, so being her last year, she wanted to have some social skills. He suggests she tries smiling, but it comes out so forced that it scares the boy. She's worried about her future in society, but he eases her saying that he's sure she'll get to make friends. He turns to leave as it's already late, but the girl stops him asking for his phone. The wording comes out wrong and he feels like she's trying to mug him. So she goes above and beyond, explaining that she's trying to get his number so she can befriend him. Seeing the girl's honest try, he approaches her and pats her head, too she slaps his hand away as she feels like she's treating her like an proceeding to treat him like an He whines and the girl honestly giggles, so the boy points it out and they chat for a bit. Meanwhile, Rio smiles, listening to their conversation from behind a corner. Back at home, Teproda keeps looking at his test, worried about his grades. He reaches for his cigars, but remembers his teacher's scolding, so he calls Rio. The man explains to him that only his exterior has changed, so that's not something that he can really change much. However, he might want to quit it, as with his appearance, it's most likely that he won't be able to buy any. He also points out that he won't want the smell with Chizuru around, implying that he saw them and that Tagi might have a relationship in the future. He asks him to be nice to her, but also reminds him that after the experiment is done, no one will remember him, because the 17-year-old Arata doesn't really exist. Also mentioning that if he ever tells anyone about the experiment, it'd all be over and his memories would get wiped. Later, the proto receives a text from the girl, and although it's dry at first, she sends a cat sticker that reminds him of her. He mentions it, and she simply replies with a mail, sending the boy wheezing. After that, he puts the cigars aside and starts studying. Episode 3 The next morning, the proto finds a letter in his locker. Assuming it's from the class rep, he opens it, just to find that the girl had folded it in a funny way. He goes up to her desk to ask about it, so she explains that she though that just returning it would be boring, so she seeks for interesting ways to do so. He laughs and mentions that it's indeed unusual, so she makes a note not to do it again. Ryo gives him a knowing look, making him complain in his own head that he's not having feelings for the girl. The makeup test results come back, but both transferred students' grades have dropped, making Oga worry even more. Karia makes some fun of him, so he asks for her help, almost confessing that both kids are always teasing him about them dating, but being stopped by them just in time. 10. Chizuru comes to pick her partner for some representative's chores and sees Teproda's terrible grades, simply telling him how he is. The others mock him a little bit, making her feel distant from them. So when Kazuomi tells her to simply call him Kazu, she does it right away. This makes him really happy, as everyone keeps calling him by his surname because it's easier. This has a negative impact in Rina due to her crush on the boy. But at the black-haired girl is unaware of it. She tries one of her creepy smiles on her, just determined to make more effort into making friends, but the red head feels it like a threat, despite what the proto tells her. Then the class has P.E., having to fill their national fitness test averages, but the girl's teacher and the boy's teacher are being competitive for the field, as they used to be together in college. The boys end up doing the launch test first. A boy named Asaji goes first, he's the Helleth representative, and a really athletic boy, so he gets grades above average right away, being followed by Inukai, his friend who tosses the ball at the proto for not paying attention. When it's Kazu's turn, we see that he's terrible at sports, we'll see it reason enough for the proto to tease him. Although when it's his turn, he hurts himself while tossing the ball, as if adults don't heat up first, they get injured. So the blonde boy teases him back. Meanwhile, the girls do the running test, with Rina getting a decent timing, as says on the volleyball team. However, she compares herself to Tamurai, her senior in the team who got a better timing than her. All in all, the other girl is very nice to the red head, hugging her and encouraging her. The proto is having his fun at looking at young girls cuddling, we we'll see upsets in Yoka, who's also friends with the girl and despise creepy boys around her. Chizuru calls Rina by nickname remarking her timing, which upsets the other girl, as she doesn't remember her name, nor even her. The black-haired girl tries to smile at her again, but only infuriates the other girl even more. 
Still, she tries to be civil and offers her hand, but the girl only leaves the watch on it as she really called her because she needed her to time the race because it was her turn. This upsets the redhead because she thought of her as her rival, just to now understand that she wasn't even noticed. Later, Arata asks to see Ryo's scores, noticing that he doesn't even try to stand out. The other adult recommends him to take care of his rusty body if he doesn't want to end up injured, but the proto gets offended for being called old. He does a heat up before running and he starts very well, but midway trips with his own feet, scratching his knee and making Asagi have to carry him bridal style, which is very embarrassing for him. This also makes Ryo and Oga wheeze. Some days later, the proto finds Chizuru walking to school alone and decides to join her. They chat for a bit and she realizes that his injuries haven't healed yet, something normal for young boys, making the proto uncomfortable. Rita spots them in the lockers and is surprised to see the girl smiling naturally, which confirms her suspicions about the girl just hating her. This makes her believe that the black-haired girl is just a pick-me who's only nice around the boys. Meanwhile, Ryo writes his updates on Arata's file, comparing him to the very first subject. However, he seems to be improving. Episode 4 Rina is reflecting upon the silver pin perks, although that's unimportant to her compared to spending time with Kazu. Then the boy walks past her, catting a bit about his duties and he calls Chizuru, who follows behind and while passing by the other girl, tries to smile at her. They leave leaving Rina fuming as she thinks the girl is just constantly mocking her. During lunch, the girl's insecurities still pound in her head, noticing that although she views the class rep and Tamare Hanoka as rivals, they don't see her the same way. Hanoka, who's eating with her, tries to ease whatever is worrying her, being nice and friendly, but when the redhead sees Chizuru, all her efforts go to waste. Meanwhile, Olga complains about another failure of the two transferred students. They sit together at lunch but he notices the black-haired girl eating alone, so he decides to invite her over to eat with them so she can also help them study. But the proto stops him being aware of Rina's jealousy if they sat together. This also alerts Anne who thinks it's sweet of him. However, he wonders if he's hijacked the class rep chances to make friends. So later that evening, he texts her asking if she doesn't have friends to eat with, which the girl takes as a mocking gesture at first, but after some sticker exchanging, she explains that she thinks she's close to befriend the redhead. This worries the prota, as he wouldn't want to see them fight, but he doesn't want the girl to be alone either, so he calls Ryo, asking him to befriend the girl as they are both loners. The man explains to him that he can't follow him with the girl around, so he refuses profoundly and advises him not to get too involved in the girl's problems, as they shall learn from their mistakes while they are still young. Yet he encourages to do as he pleases, as it's important for the experiment, which leaves the boy puzzled. He knows that this time of life with friends is important, but doesn't really know what to do. A whole month has gone by since he started the experiment, and that day, Oga gives him some homework, as he won't be able to stay with him, so he leaves him in his study room. Then, Shizuru comes to pick the blonde boy up. She sees the redhead and tries to talk to her, but the other girl just grabs her friend and leaves for practice. The two stay there until late at night, so much that Inukai and Asagi come to pick her up, Rita tells her to go get changed as she won't be leaving the school yet, so she does and the boys thank her for helping their friend, also helping her pick up the balls. Once they are gone, Tegbrol's insecurities hit back again, affecting her practice and getting her in a dark mental spot. After a while, she goes to the staff room to leave the gym key and notices the student's bag out hissed. When entering the room, she notices that it's the balk haired girl's bag, so her jealousy and pain take over her and she s*** the bag, planning on dumping it on the train station. However, while going down the stairs, Arata finds her and starts chatting casually, asking her to show him where to put the study room key, but the girl refuses and tries to leave quickly. He leaves her at first, but soon notices the other bag she's carrying and recognizes it. Rena starts running downstairs with the boy trying to catch her. She slips and falls, but he manages to catch her right away. However, since they are in test stairs, his foot slips and they fall together. When Chizuru comes out for the staff room, she notices that her bag is missing and hears a loud noise coming from the stairs, so she goes to check just to find the redhead and the proto cuddling on the floor. Episode 5 Arata wakes up at the infirmary, as Chizuru informed the staff and brought their things there. Tenors tells him where he is, but she's called through the speakers, so he lets Rina on his watch. He remembers the whole problem who got him there and starts remembering how at his job, some men were jealous of the woman who was training him and started badmouthing her. In the end, they ruined one of her sales, which they had to apologize for to their boss. On the ride home, he was livid, but the woman explained how it only made her sad that hard workers had to go through that path, because it showed how they're giving up on winning on their own effort. When Rina wakes up, he asks why did he get the girl's bag and asks if she had from it. The girl defends herself, saying that she only wanted to trouble her, so he starts lecturing her, saying that the girl he knew was a hard worker who was now tainting her hard work with dirty moves. She snaps, upset with him for lecturing her, and with the girls for not seeing her as a rival, deeming her effort worthless and starting to cry. She tries to cut herself up, so the boy goes up to her, caressing her head saying that she's just way too worried comparing herself to others, that she fails to see her own worth. 
After a bit of crying, she tries to act as if nothing happened. So the proto explains to her that she hasn't given Chizuru the chance to get to know her. So she was just misinterpreting her, trying to help a little. He tells her to ask the girl to smile for her and she'll realize what he means. He's leaving school when he finds Chizuru waiting for him. She's been wondering why would the red head have her bag and although she knows she wouldn't steal from her, nothing else comes to mind. Not wanting to hurt her feelings, he lies at first, saying that the girl was just taking care of her things, but Ryo's words hit hard and he ends up telling her that he lied. He tells her that Rina was jealous of her getting the silver pin, so she got her bag to take back at her. As she doesn't understand social cues, she thinks that just giving her the pin would make them friends, but the boy denies it and tells her that different people require different approaches. So she decides to wait on her to directly ask, telling the boy to leave. However, he can't just leave, so he hides behind some bushes to spy their chat, finding Ryo who was actually spying on him. Besides, how he affects those around him is also important for the experiment, so Tay spied together. When Rina comes out of the school, the girl stops her, asking directly why did she have her bag and riding Arata out, not to be mean, but to know if the girl hates her. Then, although the redhead was thinking of lying, she remembers the boy's words telling her not to run away, so she yells that she hates her for taking what she wanted and mocking her on top of that. This really confuses the other girl, as she doesn't remember her being Maki. This shoots Rina's thoughts, as although she's upset, she remembers the boy's advice and asks her to smile for her. Once she confirms that the girl is just that awkward, she blows up on her explaining that she though the girl was just making fun of her. But Chizuru explains that she's been smiling to her in the hope that they could be friends. Although this leaves the other girl baffled at first, she soon starts laughing. The black-haired girl explains that despite being smart, socializing is her weak point and she knows that she's troubled people before. But making a big effort, she offers her hand, asking to be her friend, which Rina takes but not without asking to be proper rivals. The girl still doesn't understand but accepts in front of the threat of not being friends anymore if she holds back. Then, she apologizes for what she's done, making the awkward girl smile honestly at her. Once at home, the redhead texts the prota, telling him that she knows he ratted her out, but thanks him for it. He's smiling at the text when Ryo sneaks a picture of him for his report. They are drinking at his place to celebrate that his hard work was blooming. The prota asks if what he told the girls was really awk, but the other man eases him, telling him that one day, when they are out in the real world, they'll remember the lectured more and that who lectured them but still makes fun of him for ranting to the girl when he used to be the same. Episode 6 Chizuru is googling the terrible feeling she got when she saw the prota and the red head laying together as he hugged her protectively and the search offers back the word love, but she thinks it's impossible. Golden week has started but Arata is awakened by Kazu's call, as him and Anne are in front of his flat so they can study. This worries the boy as he has beer cans and cigarettes lingering all around. So he tells them to wait some minutes while he cleans, throwing the garbage on his balcony and shooting some perfume on the room to cover the smell of smoke. He pours them some tea, not letting them see his fridge which contains several amounts of beer, and they sit down to study. After a while, the proto is tired and Ted blonde boy complains about him being accepted in the school when he's so d Ted girl covers for him saying that the transferring exams should've been too easy that year, she also got in. The proto realizes that she's been on her phone the whole time, making the other boy realize that she does that often, so Arata asks if she's got a boyfriend. She jokes about him, which shoots his alarms, but she eases him. She strategically changes the subject to Kazuomi's clothes as they are usually baggy on him because they are his brother's old ones. The both of them mention how those clothes don't stop the class rep from being popular and joke about passing their exams if he got a girlfriend. But once again, the boy is oblivious about what they mean and scolds them, telling them to keep studying as the midterm exams are the next week. After more studying, the two transferred ones are worn out, but the blonde boy hasn't even started. Checking the time for the exams and goes to see the proto's calendar, realizing that in the previous months he had interviews marked. This surprises the boy who grabs the calendar and throws it against the wall, explaining that there was a bug there. Then Kazu gets a call, so he tries to get to the balcony. But knowing the garbage is there, the proto stops in with a silly excuse and makes the boy take the call right there. It turns out that he works at a convenience store and they need him in, so he starts leaving, but the proto asks for him to take the girl as well, as she being in the flat of a boy who leaves alone would be wrong, but he brushes him off. Once alone, he asks the girl if she doesn't want to leave, but she denies and tells him how admirable Oba is for having his studies figured out, having a job, and also teaching them, so she encourages them to study harder. As the sun sets, Ryo calls the lab to request being able to listen to what Arata is doing over the phone, listening to the exact moment when it asks about the calendar, so he runs to the boy's flat. The proto makes an excuse about looking for a part-time job, so the girl asks if he's ever worked at the convi next to the station. He nods and she tells her that she knew, undoing her braids, taking off her glasses and asking if he recognizes her. She explains that she met him there a while ago, but he looked older. However, she's glad that they are the same age because she falls in love with him at first sight. She confesses how excited she is for having some alone time with him, 
and asks if he does feel something, but it's all so sudden that he doesn't know what to say. So she asks if he's in love with someone, and although Chizuru pops up in his mind, he says he doesn't. She confesses her feelings again and leans closer, but the boy pulls her apart. Right in the moment, Ryo enters the flat. He entered with the spare key he had, which at first makes the girl think they are lovers, but the prona denies it. The other man holds her head and asks her to stop, but she asks for him to let go and accuses him of being mad at her for trying to get the prota away from him. He complains about her being out of line and sparing too much time with this subject, implying that she also works for real IFE. She formally introduces herself, so the boy asks how old are they, with the girl being a year older than him and the other man being the same age. This all explains why she's always on her phone as Ryo is constantly scolding her, and apologizes for tricking him but explains that she was just testing him, as subjects often use the experiment to take advantage of young girls. That's the reason why Ryo rushed over there as they'd have to cancel the experiment so the girl explains that he shouldn't have as he's the subject that she chose. Despite the brunette telling her to stop, she explains that she picked him as a subject, but she didn't finish her training in time so she couldn't be his supervisor. So the lab passed the task to Ryo, although he didn't finish it in time as well, as training only should last a year. He scolds her for telling and they both apologize, although Ryo thinks to himself that they are still kinda lying to him. Episode 7 As Ryo writes the Proto's report, he remembers the first subject he had, as he got scolded for getting emotionally involved with said subject. In a flashback, we see that while he was reading a report, subject no. 001 called him, asking for advice, but he turned him down politely. Then he received an email explaining that he had to do a revision for a new test subject, so he goes to Arata's workplace, a convenience store during night shift. He studies him briefly and decides to test him, leaving his wallet behind after waiting for a meal. The Prada rushes to him soon and gives the wallet back, leaving the brunette pleased with his reaction and awareness of his surroundings. As he walks back home and catches up with him, accusing him of trying to steal her subject, but he explains that he was just studying him. She looks pleased with it, praising her chosen boy and asks him about his subject, but he explains that 001 is still a human host he can't tell if he's going to pass. The year goes by and the subject does not improve, so Ryo's boss takes it on him. And on top of it, he has to go to the subject's place to give the news and explain that they couldn't fix him up in any jobs. As he goes back home defeated, he finds the girl waiting on him under the rain with a spare umbrella, but he doesn't take it. She covers him with her own and he asks what else he could have done, he was told to step aside and later blame on the failure. So to cheer him up, the girl tells him that they receive an email accepting Arata as a subject and putting him as his supervisor. After the day he signs the contract, the brunette goes to give in her uniform and she invites him to have some coffee. She chats him about how he thinks the boy would do, and although he has his insecurities, the girl tries to cheer him up, something a bit unsettling for the man. Some time later, the proto calls him to get some men to go back to look his age. Although at first Ryo panics, the other man explains that he wants them, so he can quit his job in person as he can't just cut them off through phone. So he goes to get the meds and some for himself, the lab tech asks why would he want two pills for himself, and the man explains that he doesn't want the proto to know that support would be in his class, as he might not stress about it enough. So he accompanies him to quit, and the proto explains that it was stressful because he cared about the owner. He takes the pill again in the middle of the park, showing his supervisor determination, but the brunette explains that he'll feel sleepy when the pill kicks in, upsetting the boy because he had plans. He finishes his report on a lighter note, explaining that the changes No. 002 has made so far make him want to keep watching. Episode 8 New makeups come back, and although in passes, Arata is still failing, so the teacher calls him to the staff room after classes. There the woman worries about him, asking if he's sick and how he's doing, but still encourages to keep trying just as he's been doing. He realizes that he's been pushing though, but he also knows that it's because of his friend's help. Then Hanoka enters the room, but the teacher starts scolding her for having bad grades as Tev volleyball team's captain. She puts too much pressure on the girl due to their last match, and although the girl tries to brush it off trusting her team, the woman lectures her about being way too important for the team, as without her they'll sure lose. The girl still smiles and says her goodbyes, leaving with the boy. They chat a bit as they walk and the girl explains that she's on the school with a sports scholarship, so she's not very good at studies. The boy asks why getting in that school and not on a school with a good sports team, but quickly brushes it off saying it's not his business. She smiles and explains that she's there because of her childhood friends, Asaji and Indukai, which the boy knows because of Rina and Oga. He asks about her friendship with the redhead and she explains that she's made her volley experience funny. Before going on different paths, the girl asks if it has a crush on Oga, we'll see he denies, happy to see kids being young and worried about those things. He stays late and comes across Chizuru, he tells her that he's happy that she's made new friends as she's been eating with Rina and Hanoka often lately, but she explains that although she's happy, she's jealous about how they get along spacing out for a while. After coming back to the real world, the girl asks if the other class rep and has something as well, which makes the guy laugh happy for the red head, having such loving rivals but also denies it as well. 
After talking a bit, he invites her to walk to test station together. At volley practice, Onoka tells her friend she's going home to study, but delivers the good news before leaving. As she walks home, it starts raining, so she goes back to the club room to get an umbrella. There, she overhears some girls badmouthing her, which reminds her of all the friends she lost due to envy and jealousy on their part. She hears someone getting closer, so she hides, seeing Rina walk to the room. Terrid Head keers the girls and enters, scolding them for gossiping like that and not putting that effort on the practice like her friend does. She admits that she's jealous of her talent, but also says that she admires her effort. Terrified, the girls run away, but Hanoka is happy hiding behind a locker. After that, she goes to Inukai House, where we learn that he's the little brother of the school's nurse. They set up a study session for her makeups, and although the boy has to call Asaji, she explains that he's more on her level, so it's ok. After a while, they talk about her last tournament in Tai School, and she says that it's not big deal for them to go watch it, but he explains that she looks happy playing in this team, so they met to go. Back with Arata, Ryo calls him to congratulate him on his tests, although he doesn't find it funny. However, the brunette explains that it allowed him time for a little date with Chizuru, although the boy denies it. He asks about his studies, and the proto explains that he's been studying on his own apart from the study sessions with Oga, which makes the other man smile. But it gets in the middle of tech combo, making Ryo struggle to hang out without even saying what he called in for. After the makeup tests, Hanoka passes, but the proto doesn't, though this is not new. The nurse, who's supervising the test, stops the girl from going to practice because she looks pale and hasn't been sleeping well, but although the girl pleads to be Ok, she asks for her to take care. Back in the classroom, Inukai asks him how did the girl do in the test being cold after getting the answer he wanted. At practice, the girl is not getting the results his wants, so she's thinking about going home. As she reaches for another ball, she also feigns through the balls to the ground, which makes Rina sprain her ankle trying to dodge them. At the infirmary, the nurse confirms that it'd take up to two or three weeks to heal, intervening with the tournament, which is in three weeks. When the adults leave, Hanoka tries to apologize and cheer up her friend, but the redhead snaps at her, saying that if she had her talent, she'd have been able to dodge the ball and that she's dismissible for the team, unlike her. This makes the other girl leave crying, letting her fire and cry alone. When she stops to catch her breath, her friends find her, but as she doesn't look back, Inukai goes up to her, turning her around and letting her cry on his chest. Episode 9 the next day, Hanoka tries to act normal, inviting Chizuru to eat with her, who realizes just then that Rina is not attending classes that day. As they eat, the awkward girl points out that her eyes look weird and that she's looking ugly, not knowing that the girl's been crying herself to sleep. The captain feels bad about her harsh words, but doesn't correct her when she mistakes it by an allergy to bees. Meanwhile, Rina goes up to her teacher and coach to tell her that the injury will heal up in two weeks, but she doesn't think that she'll be in shape for the tournament, so she quits and leaves, ignoring the woman. While going back to class, the girls see her limping, but Hanoka avoids her, and the red head doesn't stop to look at her. After classes, she tries to talk to her, but can't bring herself to face the red head, so she runs off. Inukai sees it and tries to go face the other girl, but Asagi stops her, as the girl still cares for her as a friend. Meanwhile, Kazu asks the girl if she's going to practice, but she explains that she'll stay, so he decides to stay as well, while Arata leaves to give them some alone time. Hours go by and the girl just wishes for him to leave as she doesn't want him to see her like that, so she fakes like she's done to leave first. However, the blonde guy also announces he's finished and tells her to go home together. She tells him to leave first, getting more and more annoyed with his persistence. He's tires of her worse that day grumpy attitude, so he tries to make her stand up, but in the struggle the girl hurts her ankle more and they fall. She tosses her bag at him, asking him not to look, but he acts calm about it and offers her felt to go back home. As they slowly make their way downstairs, the girl complains in her mind about how much she hate girls like her if she was a guy, also remembering how harsh she was with her friend the day before, thing the boy notices, but says nothing. Later that night, and who is spying on the calls Ryo, worried about all the things going on behind Arata's back. The man eases her saying that he'll soon notice, but none of them know what he could do about it. Seeing that Chizuru, who also has noticed that something was wrong, is eating alone once again, the prota thinks deeper about the weird atmosphere surrounding him and his friends lately, relating it to the same one that used to be in his previous workplace. As he rests at home thinking about it, a black-haired girl texts him explaining that she's at his flat and needs to talk. He quickly opens, complaining about the fact that she could have called, but she explains that she felt like it was better to talk about in person, and that she's never had a friend to talk on the phone such a long period of time. As he pours them some tea, he worries that she might find odd that he leaves alone but tries to play it cool. When he sits down, he receives a message form and telling him not to assault the girl, and she and Ryo are listening to the conversation. The girl goes straight to the problem between her friends, asking if he knows something, which he don'ts it. 
But you praises her for being cautious enough not to ask Tech Girls directly and look for his date. She explains that it's probably because she will be hurting them if she's as clumsy as she's when it comes to her. She then tells him that the previous year there was a case of in her class, which made her feel a sense of duty. So she stepped in. But it only made it worse to the victim, who asked her not to get involved as she just had to bear it a little longer. In the end, the girl changed schools. This makes the boy reflect in his own experience and ends up opening up to her, explaining that he experienced something similar on his previous school, which was actually his work. He got fired up, and the woman asked him not to get involved. Then the girl asks what happened with his senior, but this sends him in a mild panic attack, as it seems from his memories that the woman had offed herself. Shizuru gets worried and approaches to him, but seeing that she looks so much like the one, he hugs her asking for forgiveness, wondering what he could have done to stop it. The girl calls him back to reality and she rushes away from her, asking for him not to call the police. Still, they worry about what to do. She knows it's not her place, but she can't shake of her sense of duty. The boy feels the same, but is afraid of doing something wrong again. So the girl proposes that they get revenge on their past selves and actually do something useful for the girls. Some time after that, Hanoka is at practice when they stop by to talk to her. Meanwhile, her childhood friends are looking for her and find her in the club room, but don't enter when Tei hear her talk. Inukai turns around, explaining that he's going to look for Rina to force her to listen to their friend. And so he does, dragging her to the gym and asking her to just shut up and listen, both being followed by Kazuomi. When they get there, the redhead hears Hanoka saying that she wasn't going to join the volleyball team. Episode 10 Inside the room, Hanoka explains that in her previous schools, she started to hate doing sports. Although she loved them, her natural talent for it made other people jealous. So seeing that she hurt people, she decided not to stand out on her high school volleyball team. But the first day, Rina pulled her aside, recognizing her and telling her to not hold back with her. The other girl complied and hit the ball without holding back just as she asked, hitting her in the face. But despite this, the redhead laughed and asked for her to enjoy those three years playing together. Yet now Ms. Ekmet even talked to her, afraid that Sal snap again and don't want to be her friend anymore. Shizuru explains to her that, as a kid, she transferred schools a lot and in the end gave up in making friends. She struggles for a moment to talk, but Arata places a hand on her back, giving her the strike to tell the girl that she needs to treasure her friendship and not give up like she did. After that talk, the girl feels better and decides to talk to her friend. But to the ones at its bad luck, they can't hide before the door is opened. Rina tries to run away, but Hanoka stops her, asking her to play in the match. But the girl yells at her saying that she's already quit and to leave it like that. She starts running again but Chizuru also stops her, begging for her to play as she'll be watching, but it doesn't stop her either. However, the brunette girl thanks them all for helping and promises not to give up on her friend and to trust her. The next day, Rina doesn't talk to anyone and back at home, Arata texts the black-haired girl, apologizing for not being of help. Still, the girl tongues him for helping her be brave enough to talk. He then receives a call from Ryo, asking if he's free during the weekend, but he explains he's going to the match with the awkward girl which the other man uses to tease him, but in the end says he's seeing him the next day. The next evening, Tei Redhead doesn't arrive to the match and Chizuru gets tired, asking if someone has her address, so she herself can drag her there to play. Ryo doesn't hesitate to send the pro to her address, which he finds creepy, but still takes the grill to look for her, and doesn't lose the chance to make the brunette aware that he's changing. At the Redhead's home, they fake to be a delivery guide get the girl to open up, forcing their way in when she tries to close the door. Shizuru calls her out as she's wearing the uniform knowing she wants to go, but the other girl refuses profoundly. Both of them scold her harshly, saying that as friends they are entitled to worry about her even if they don't go through tests saying hardships. The girl keeps snapping back until the black-haired girl grows tired and hits her forehead. She explains that all of their selfish desires are for her to play, and her desire is to play as well. So there's no problem stopping her doubt, she then breaks up crying, saying that she wants to play but can't just show up after two weeks. But the other girl comforts her and ends up convincing her to go. Then, Arata receives a call saying that their team is losing, so they rush there and the black-haired girl gives Rina her hair ties, allowing her to play comfortably. She goes and apologizes to Hanoka, who easily forgives her and apologizes for her sprain. However, the match didn't end up as they wanted, so the girls end up crying outside with Chizuru in the middle. They open up their hearts, apologizing for their mistakes. Yet in the end, Rina recognizes that the match was fun and promises her friend to play volley with her at college. They both thank the awkward girl for not giving up on then, gubbing her tightly. The boys watch from afar, happy that it all ended well. Then they call the girls and the players rush in for another match. Episode 11 Some time later, the proto approaches Ryo asking for the pill to go back to his adult self, so he can visit the grave of his senpai as her anniversary is soon. He agrees but isn't it's ongoing with him, as he knows he hasn't been stable the last time he went, and they are afraid he might try to take his life or blow up to an ex-coworker that might be there. Arata insists in being trustworthy, but the man reaches for his neck and he panics. In the end, he accepts him to go with him. 
Rio goes to the office to fill his request for the pills when and finds him asking to come with, but the man refuses, which upsets the girl. However, he asks her for a favor. The next day to classes, Shuzuru realizes that he's got a suit and even comments on it, surprising the boy a little. That evening, they meet up at the Proto's flat to take the pill and decide to sleep of the drowsiness side effect, but the brunette asks for him to wake him up as he has the bad habit of sleeping through his alarms. He keeps dreaming about his failure and the first time he met Arata, but he wakes him right on time, tumbling a little. In the train to the cementary, they chat a little about the time they've been working together, when he receives a message from him confirming whatever he asked her to do. Once in front of the grave, the proto gets lost in thought, remembering how the events of her played out, laving himself for snapping even when she asked not to, remembering how cold-heartedly everyone at that company reacted to the woman taking her own life right there, going back to work in no time. He couldn't bear it. He couldn't stand losing such a happy, kind, and hard-working woman over a black company, so he quieted. His boss didn't have mercy on him, no one did, and after that things went south. He couldn't get out of bed, he was struggling to get a job, and socializing got him sick in the stomach. Suddenly, Ryo calls him back to Earth and they start leaving. They pass by a woman and a man, but as they are about to go down the stairs, the man recognizes him. They are working at that company and have seen him in some pictures, besides their boss bragging about his story. They are pretty aware about how things are and how bad the company is, but they are afraid of quitting. However, him and Sasaki, his senpai, have always been their heroes in a certain way. This warm up the proto's heart, and when they ask how he's been doing since he left, he doesn't have the heart to lie to them. He tells them how hard it was to get back on his feet, how bad he felt, but he does lie saying that he still works at the convenience store. They understand, but he ends up telling them that all in all, he's glad to quit. On the train back home, Ryo praises how his actions are strength to other people, but the proto asks if the meeting up was his arrangement. The man denies it and asks why did he lie to them as being part of the experiment and being paid does count as a job to him. But the proto doesn't see that way as it wasn't a job he found on his own. In a flashback, we see the Rio did ask and to inform him if those people were going to go to the grave as he knew that they respected Arata and his senpai and that they visited the grave before. This surprises the girl as it might look to the higher ups that he's getting involved again, but he explains that he won't meddle. Back in the present, the girl shoots him up with texts, asking how did things go with the prota, to which he briefly replies. Still, the prota thanks him as it all made him feel better, and he didn't leave with regress as he usually did. Episode 12 Time keeps going by and the summer break is just around the corner. Chizuru goes up to the prota, initiating conversation on her own. He smiles at it and notices new hair ties that the girls have gifted her. Right then, and runs into him, hugging him and making the other girl jealous who dones even both and calling her by her name. Seeing that she's pressuring, Ryo runs at them and snatches the girl with glasses from them. The proto mentions that he's never seen her talking with the boy, so she explains that they know each other prom the previous year, calling him by his name. This makes him feel uneasy, as she calls him by his surname and with an honorific, but not to the brunette or Kazu, which upsets him even further. At class, he's happy for the summer break, but the blonde boy explains to him that if he fails his common makeups, he'll have to take more during summer. However, he eases him saying that he'll also be studying as he'll take the prep exams. This surprises Rina, who though he'd go to Oba University, which he thinks doing, but also wants to keep his options open. That night, his supervisors go to celebrate the end of the first term to Arata's place, which upsets him because it always is in his house. So the others explain that it's not as if they could go out and plus, the lab delivers booze to him as a part of the expenses. Soon and the two of them start mocking him for not having any vacation plans as he needs to keep taking the exams but they still ask him to update them if Nathan comes up. However, they are also going to be at school as part of their job is to keep studying to blend in. Suddenly, Olga's topic comes out and the grill and the proto start chatting about how they should set him and Karyo up so they can end up together, even asking the brunette to get close to the girl so the class rep would get jealous. Ryo stops them, saying that they should take the bai's feelings into consideration, but they are drunk enough to just mock him for it. He also mentions to the proto that there's no reason for him not to experience love as well after all, he'll be forgotten once the experiment is over, which kinda upsets him. Next day at lunch, Kazu sits with him and he takes the chance to ask about his love life, asking if he has someone on his mind. He starts asking questions about someone he might want to kiss, to hold hands with, etc. It gets the boy way too flustered, besides not relating his affection for Rina with love, so he asks if he's ever kissed anyone and when the proto nods, starts calling him and Later in the day, the man's words roam in his mind and can't come out of it, accepting him on his test. After classes, they are walking home Tagahir when Kazuomi sees Reno the man. They hide behind a wall to spy and the proto is awfully surprised to see that the man is the new hired of his ex-company, so he knows he has to stay out of it. The blonde boy starts panicking to think that they might be dating or something, but when he sees that the girl starts falling and that the man holds her by the waist, he doesn't hesitate to run up to them. The man asks the girl who he is and she explains that he's a friend. 
Once that is confirmed, Man smiles to him and explains that he was just helping her because he's had a heat stroke. So he offered to drive her to the station. But of course a young girl wouldn't accept. Knowing that the girl is in good hands, he leaves her with him and so does Arata, texting him to take the girl home. As they walk, he can't take his eyes off her hand. The knight catches him thinking about all the things his friends say and relating them to the red head, so he ends up texting him that he loves her, which the man celebrates for. So the next day at school, he tells the blonde guy that he should confess on the fireworks festival if he doesn't want anyone to steal her from him. Soon Ryo, Anne and Chizuru join their conversation. So he asks for their advice and his confession, but none of them is of help, not even Arata, who he deemed as a ladies' man. In the middle of that chaos, he decides to invite the girl. So that night, he texts Rina to invite her. She panics and asks their friends what she should do, just to realize that he also invited them, so she was panicking over nothing. Episode 13 While deciding what to wear through text, Rina asks the girls to arrange some moments for her and Kazu to be alone, as she'll try to confess her feelings for the boy. When the day arrives, Shuzuru is the last one to get there and they are finally able to make it in. While walking, the group starts to separate by couples, with a black-haired girl ending having to get support from Ryo's arm as she got dizzy due to the crowd. Arata is discusing with him about how they have to be smooth for the young couple to have their space to bloom as a couple, but as he trusts back to watch them, his eyes catch the other couple shooting a bad feeling down his guts. He starts panic thinking, knowing that the other man wouldn't mess with a high schooler, but not so sure about the girl's feelings. At some point, the redhead and the blonde boy end up alone. When they notice their friends gone, they receive messages from their friends telling them to enjoy themselves, though they don't feel ready for it yet. Back with the rest of the group, Ryo goes to the prota, who asks for him to control his co-worker. Because she's being too clingy, the man refuses and confronts him, mentioning that what he doesn't like is him being with a black-haired girl. He tries to deny it, but the brunette uses his own advices for Oga against him to tell him to enjoy the summer. Speaking of which, Kazu simply stands by with Rina to look in the direction of where the fireworks are meant to be, while the crowd passes by them. They chat briefly and suddenly the boy confesses to her. This takes the red head by surprise, but after they have a bit of a moment when she's pushed by the crowd, Rina gathers the courage to confess as well, asking him to go out with her. The whole deal is of course messy, but after figuring their feelings for each other, they hold hands and agree to date. While the rest of the group sits to wait for the fireworks, Arata and Chizuru realize that they've lost them and the boy comes to the realization that he's been set up as well. While they wait, she mentions how easy it is for him to not make friends, so he makes her realize that she also got a lot of friends. In the end, she mentions how glad she is that they met. As the fireworks roar in the sky, the proto wonders if she meant something more than what she said, but brushes it aside, just happy to have met her, but sad that she'll forget about him. They talk about how fireworks are pretty, but also very lonely, as they fade away after exploding. There, Chizuru starts remembering every moment since she met him, and we see that she's also a part of Real IFE, being Experiment No. 001. Sad about how she thinks the boy will forget about her, she mumbles something about him being like the fireworks, but he can't hear her. Then they see the new couple holding hands and everyone goes to congratulate them, to then enjoy the show all together. After the show, they all part ways and the prota and the black-haired girl go home together, but they have to stop at a park because the girl feeling dizzy again. They talk for a while about how sad is that one day they'll all have to part ways, but they choose to live in the moment. He reaches her face but switches to cares her head, asking her to live her life to the fullest, as he thinks that he only can wish for her well-being, as he's not allowed to stay in his life. There he remembers all the advices he gave to Kazu while staring at her lips, but she calls his name and he goes back to reality. So he lets go and tells her to go back home, dealing with the fact that he'll lose her. As she stands up, she loses balance and falls on him, making it hard for him to pull away. As they walk, he mocks her about tripping away, so he tells her to offer his arm so she can hold on to it. As they walk, he promises to never forget about her, so she promises the same. Meanwhile, Anne and Rio listen to them and write the report on them, while the boy reminds her that she'll be the girl's support during the next term of classes. Episode 14 As classes kick back again, Kazu is class rep again, but now Rina is his companion. During lunch, she confronts Chizuru, thinking that she'd let her win, but she denies it. Given the case, the redhead asks if there was something wrong with her during the test, so Hanako suggests that maybe she's been thinking about Arata. This clicks for the girl, but the black-haired one doesn't relate it, as she doesn't understand what's wrong with her. So Rina tells her to kick the problem head on instead of winning, just as she usually does, but the girl mentions that she also got to whine before being with her bovi friend. However, she thanks her, as her mind is clearer now. Later, she meets with Ryo behind the school to ask if Arata is a member of Real IFE, but he explains that he can't say anything about it, mentioning that if she got to know, he might get expelled from the experiment and she won't see him ever again. However, he praises her for getting more involved with people than she did before. He also informs her that from then on, she'll have him as a supervisor. The three of them go to her place where she tries to take some information out of the boy, pleading that if the proto wasn't part of the program, he could have said it, but now she can't believe his word. 
and jumps at the problem, mentioning that she's suspecting on him out of pure desire as she could date him if he was a grown-up, but the girl brushes her off, both giving each other a knowing giggle. She starts remembering that her program got extended because she failed the first year and falls asleep treasuring a picture of her with her new friends. The cultural festiva comes close, so the class prepares for it deciding the group's officials. Bulba suggests that the protos should be one, as he thinks that he'll come up with something fun and because it could make his grade score better out of good work. So Chizuru volunteers a sap. Later, they stay at class to do some brainstorming, as the class decides to make an English-style cafe, which brings certain problems like the costumes, food, etc. He mentions that it's not like her to volunteer for things like this, so she explains that it was because she wanted to do something useful, and because of what he told her during the fireworks festival. Once done, they give all the paperwork to Oga, this being a massive pile of schedules, budget, and everything they might need. Then the proto notices that Karyu is not with him, so he asked about it, and he asked to talk to them. Apparently, she asked to come over to his place, but he sought her down in a bad manner and she got upset, leading to some sort of fight. He explains to them that after his big brother got at his workplace, he became a shut-in, and rubbing how happy his life was in his brother's face felt wrong for him. Arad explains to him that he should just act normal around his brother, as he'd feel even worse if he felt his family was being caught she was around him. But the boy thinks Rina would never approve, so Chizuru, recognizing that her friend is indeed a perfectionist, also knows that she's not the one to push anyone, as she knows how hard self-image can be on each person. Both of them ease him down and he decides to go tell her the truth. After that, she wonders how come the proto could simply talk to their friend and ease all his worries just like that. He recognizes that she's also awesome for knowing the redhead so much, so both fall into silence. As they walk, the proto wonders how would the girl feel if she knew the real him, which utterly bugs him. Days go by and the preparations for the festival get bigger and bigger, with the new couple looks even more lively than before and the whole class joining in the youth lively feelings. When the proto comes back from borrowing some stuff, he finds the girl asleep in her desk, but hesitates to caress her hair, realizing that he might be in love with her. Episode 15 The day of the festival arrives and everyone is on their Victorian outfits, with Caria trying to cover herself with a sweatshirt, as she's ashamed. As Oba tries to convince her of taking it off, Chizuru enters in full custom, making the proto blush. She mentions that this kind of things come once in a lifetime, so they should all the way out. Before turning to do something else, she notices his tie is crooked and goes to fix it making the boy nervous for her being so close. The cafe gets busy in no time and everyone is delighted with the kids, so Hanoka starts mentioning the types of butler they have. When Ryu asks for Arata's type, she mentions that he's an old type as he has a mature aura to him. When the flow stops a little, they decide to take a picture together, but knowing his place, the proto decides to take it instead of being in it. He then goes to Chizuru, who's given out pamphlets outside. He sits with her, but their homeroom teacher finds them and tells them to go take a look at the place together, as the crowd is already inside the school. Remembering his questions, she makes a move, holding the boy's arm close to her, which gets him very flustered. He tries to avoid the topic, but she asks if he thinks she might have an infatuation with him. She quickly pulls off, confessing that she was just trying to confirm something. He eases her, saying that she just was trying to figure something out head-on, but that feelings like those can't be determined by the spur of the moment as they flourish with time, so she take it easy. He reaches to pat her head as always, but can't bring himself to do so. They visit some stalls, but Anne, who was hearing the conversation, seems sad for the come out of Iral. At the end of the day, during the bonfire, Ryo approaches the proto to ask for his experience. To what say he explains that it feels you fair to force his friends to share a part of his youth with him, dot though he's also grateful for it. They chat about how worried he's for vanishing from the existence of his friends, but the man explains to him that some of his actions will remain in the form of the effect they have on people. On the other hand, Anne approaches Chizuru to ask about her experience insisting on her relationship with the proto, but she doesn't say much about it. Some days later, the students have their one-on-one -on -one conversations with their teachers. When it's Arata's turn, he knows this doesn't hold any value for him, but still mentions that he'd like to get into Oba Yu. Still, the teacher scolds him for his grades, but also mentions that this tests are to evaluate the type of adult he wants to be. After a long chat, he comes out fine if Oga and Chizuru. They mention wanting to go to the same college, which excites the blonde boy as they'll all be together. However, this has a different effect in the proto, who started to resent the fact that he'll lose the friends he made. Later that night, while going back home, Ryo reaches him to ask about the chat, but the proto is not in the mood for it. He asks if there's any chance he can grow old with his friends, but the man denies. Still, he gives him the chance to go drink and remain friends with the girl of the glasses and him as adults, which makes the proto smile. Back at the lab and is making her report when Ryo arrives. They make some small talk, but when she points out her subject's response to the vocational talk, she wonders if they are doing the right thing by letting them get closer. She knows how things are and that once the experiment is over, the other will forget about the subject, but them being both subjects, they'll both forget about each other. Although he tries to ease her, she breaks out crying as the picture is way too painful for her. 
He caresses her head and reminds her that all they can do is support them in this new fleeting experience the best they can. On her own, Chizuru wonders about it all, but thinks that as things are soon to end, it makes no sense to wonder and figure out her feelings, although she seems to have put the pieces of the puzzle together. During a picture day, both of them still struggle to come to terms to being forgotten, but as the picture is being taken, all they can do is look at each other. Episode 16 with Christmas around the corner and the intern exams being much calmer, all the students seem to have relaxed, except for the prota, who still has to take makeups. While Olga helps him to study, the blonde boy asks for his adult help to chose a place to take his girlfriend to a Christmas date. The man makes fun of him, asking if he's ready to enter to adulthood, but the pure boy doesn't understand what he means. In the middle of being made fun of, the blonde one asks why does he not invite Shizuru on a date, as according to him and his girlfriend, they love each other. This ashames the prota and leaves him thinking, but he doesn't feel like it's right, despite of his real desires. However, since what happened during the festival, Chizuru starts avoiding him recklessly, making it way too obvious, which makes the prota wonder how are they supposed to start dating if she's running away, just to then correct himself. Right before the PE class, the girls ask the black-haired girl what's going on between them for her to avoid him like that, to which the girl explains that she's too confused about her own feelings and doesn't know what to do. Hanoka is losing her patience, but Rina stops her, saying that the girl should figure it out on her own, and that she has faith in her. However, while the redhead is playing basket, Hanoka insists that she should ask Arata on a date, as Karyu and Kazu are going to go on one. This seems to leave a big impression on the girl, because during lunch, she approaches the prota and invites him to hang out. She tries to mention that it's a date, but can't bring herself to say the words, so she simply mentions that she's going to text him later. That's night, as Arata is nervously pacing in his room, he receives the girl's message. She starts his way like it's a work email, texting the station the address and reminding him of his exams so they won't be any problem. Yet she sends a cute love sticker, as she usually does, this eases the man, but she then mentions that it's a date, completely leaving him baffled. As he's on the train, he remembers talking to Ryo about it, that same night, who was definitely awk with it, as it's make his report reach her. He also worries about this date being just an illusion for the girl once the experiment is over, but he can't help to be happy she invited him. They meet in the agreed place way too early, but both of them are like that, used to adults' social cues. She gives him a pile of paperwork as she explains that she researched every date option for the occasion, but couldn't come up with any plan. He smiles and urges her to take on the first place that seemed good. They walk around the mall for some time, chatting about their friends and themselves while being supervised by Rio and Anne. The girl with Galsies asks if they are really meant to be there, but he brushes it off while sending a text to the prota, who was at a gift shop with his date. Chizuru shows him the little keychain asking for his opinion, as it'll be his Christmas present. He tells her that whatever she chooses for him will be fine, and as she approaches the register, he grabs a similar keychain to buy for her ad both a Christmas and birthday present, as it's that day. They walk for a little while and end up the Ferris wheel. They chat a little about how their year went, both getting pretty gloomy when referred to Arata's birthday, as they both know won't be possible for them to spend it together. They promise to each other not to forget that date, thing that only hurts them more and promise to spend much more time together, thinking that their promises only hurt the one in front of them, as they won't remember them. They think they are stealing precious moments of a young kid's life. Once the ride is done and they walk to the station, Arata asks for them to keep walking. He knows he's in love with her, but doesn't want to force it upon her anymore. However, he can't help his feelings and goes to reach for her hand. Once he gets it, she pulls back, apologizing for her actions as she started it all by grabbing his arm and asking him to hug her. She explains that she has confusing feelings, and that she doesn't know what they mean, but already driven by the flow of emotions, he confesses his feelings for her. He starts to panic right away, but the girl cuts him short, saying that her feelings are the same as his. Right then it starts raining, and they decide to share an umbrella, holding hands as they go back home. Episode 17 The last period of exams is over and everyone is excited for graduation, except for the new couple, who despite of living their love life to the fullest in their eyes, are still hurting. That night after saying Goofy through text, Chizuru recalls Arata, just hear his voice. They talk for a long time and fall asleep, both aware that it'll be over soon. The day of the graduation arrives and everyone writes their goodbye messages on the board, the Proto's one is a simple thank you. Although all of his friends think it's vague, he can't help but to be terribly thankful for them. After everyone is gone, the black-haired girl turns to bow at the school. She mentions that she did what he asked and lived that period of her life to her heart's content. So she asks for a hug as a reward. He takes her back, but before she can apologize for it, he hugs her tight, promising to not ever forget about her. She hugs him back tight, embracing him with all of her heart. It doesn't take too much for them to start crying, she knows that, as he's also a test subject, she's forget about him and that he'll forget about her, which makes everything more difficult. Once at their homes, their supervisors give them their jobs options and the pills to go back to their normal self, having to stay there to make sure they took it. Everything goes well with Arata, but Chizuru makes an heart hurt, as she does the dishes. She receives a call from Ryo. 
She's updating him about how did it all go, and gives him a thanks message from the black-haired girl. However, when she's tucking her in, a marker falls from the bed and the woman realizes that the girl wrote in her had, I was in love with Keizaki Arata. This breaks her down, she leaves the phone and starts crying loudly, grabbing the sheets with pain as now that she's seen it, she can't leave it there. She should've hit it better. We see that Arata chose to work at Real IFE, wanting to share the things he learned thanks to that experience. And so he does, he works as the support system and often goes to have drinks with his ex-supervisors. Although he has the memories of his friends, he can't remember who does the keychain belling to, but still keeps it. The first person he went to after getting the job was Oga's brother, entering the house and offering him the possibility of changing his life. One day after a long day of work, he arrives late to a work drinking party, where he crosses paths an adult Chizuru is a very similar way as he was on her seat. They chat a little bit, but she's called over and leaves, and before he could see the keychain hanging from her purse, a co-worker tugs him in, pointing out how being an ex-test subject gives him an advanced position. After the party is done and they all move to the second venue, he crosses her again as new recruits have a long day ahead the next morning. She offers her umbrella as it's raining, but he refuses and she's about to live. However, she stops herself and mentions that she heard that he was a test subject, curious about why he didn't mark it out, as it raised curious eyes. He explains that he doesn't mind, so she comments that she didn't mark hers because she didn't want to answer personal questions as she was there for two years, while the normal period is just one. He asks if she doesn't mind to tell him how it was for her, so she mentions that it was like fireworks, beautiful, but felt lonely in the end. This resonates hard and soon both of them are drifting away in memories, just a call pays in each other once they remember their names. With crying eyes, they just hug, as they found each other after all. 